My special guest today is a science communicator. His name is Dan Wilson, and he runs a popular YouTube page called Debunk the Funk. And there is so much funk in the world. So I wanted to have a conversation. Dan, thanks so much for joining me today. It's great to have you, brother. Hey, Seth. It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. So uh, for those in my audience just now becoming introduced to you, introduce yourself. Who are you? What do you do? And how do you do it? Yeah, so uh, my name is Dan Wilson. Uh, I have my PhD in biological sciences from Carnegie Mellon University. I work a pretty normal job as a scientist at Janssen. But in my spare time, I run my YouTube channel where I debunk vaccine misinformation mostly. Um, and that YouTube channel I started in January of 2020. And it's been going ever since. You've been a busy man. Because yeah. it's like whack-a-mole. I mean, every time you turn around, there's some new piece of crackpot bat shittery that appears on Twitter, et cetera. And I don't know about you, but I shake my head and I think, where to start, right? You ever feel that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just every time a new crackpot comes out of the woodwork and has a uh, an opportunity to be on a big, plat big platform and say whatever they want, you know, they just spew out all of the old stuff as much stuff as they can. And you just got to try to figure out, okay, what, what, what the hell do I even address here? Like, where do I start? Yeah. Uh, so absolutely. And they just keep coming uh, one after the other. So the big reason I wanted to speak to you and I know I don't want to be too redundant for this audience because we've been talking about RFK junior mm -hmm. guys running for president and he's doing the circuit. And I mentioned, you know, he's on Joe Rogan, which was his latest, greatest dust up. Mm -hmm. And I want to get to him and why he's full of crap. And I want to talk about that from the perspective of an actual scientist, which is why we're speaking. Who are some of the other big offenders right now out there in the world of science misinformation? I know on your channel, you've gone after, I say gone after, you have debunked a lot of these bunkers. Who's on your short list right now? Oh, man. I mean, there's so many, right? I mean, I just did RFK Jr. before that. I did Brett Weinstein. There's a number of people in addition to that who have been in the game a long time and some people who have been in this disinformation game for a very short time. You could throw out lots of names like Steve Kirsch, Del Bigtree, uh, Sherry Tenpenny, Joe Mercola, all these people who have who are new school anti-vaxxers and old school anti-vaxxers. I mean, they're all on the list and I forgive my ignorance. What's Weinstein been saying? I haven't seen that particular thread. Oh, he, uh, he went on Joe Rogan, um, a few months ago, I think. And, you know, he just says pretty much the normal, uh, COVID anti-vaccine conspiracy stuff that you'd be, you'd be used to hearing. Uh, like he still thinks that ivermectin works just, uh, for COVID despite there being multiple randomized controlled trials, testing ivermectin, any which way and it just doesn't work so he's still pushing that because he doesn't really care about the science what do you think he cares about do you think it's all just um politics and power or maybe he dislikes notoriety i mean i can't read his mind but certainly you've got an inkling of what you think yeah i mean i think generally these people like brett weinstein generally are doing these things for either political monetary or personal gain um i can't know which ones are more uh influential to him in particular but i think those are safe to say those three things play a part in most of these conspiracy theorist motives there's kind of a robin hood thing going on you know mm -hmm. they're going to go out and go up against the man right and the more evidence right. they show us the more we know that it's all lies and it's all a conspiracy. A lot of conspiracists out there. I can't believe we're talking about freaking COVID even still. The one I continue yeah. to hear, Dan, is it'll fuck up my DNA. <laughs> <laughs> if I take the vaccine, oh, it yeah. will change me. Can you explain <laughs> what this is and why it's crap, please? Yeah, I mean, like... <laughs> I was really disappointed when I didn't get superpowers after getting my vaccine, <laughs> but the whole idea is just ridiculous. It, it's an mRNA vaccine, which if, if you can remember way back to your high school courses, you probably learned about um, kind of the, 
what we call the central dogma of biology, where DNA gets transcribed into mRNA and mRNA gets translated into protein. And that's how our cells do things. That's how they function and keep us alive. And it takes a very special case for that mRNA to go backwards into DNA. And our cells don't do that. Um, it's only really certain viruses that have that capability of turning RNA back into DNA. Um, so the whole idea from the get-go is just ridiculous that mRNA can somehow change the DNA, which the cell keeps very conserved within the nucleus. It wants to really maintain it, the integrity of its genome. The idea that some exogenous RNA can come in and just change the genome. I mean, how much exogenous RNA are we exposed to every day when we encounter bacteria or regular viruses on, on huge scales every single day and they don't change our DNA? So why would this be any different? Well, all right. Using language that a, you know, a simpleton like me can understand, mm -hmm. how does the COVID vaccine prevent COVID-19? Yeah, so COVID vaccines, the point is to prevent the disease, uh, COVID-19. And the way it does that is it delivers mRNA, which codes for a specific protein found in the SARS-CoV-2 virus. In this case, it codes for spike. And so it gives your body a temporary code. mRNA is like if you were to go to the library, which is DNA and write down on a piece of scrap paper, um, like copy a page out of a book and take that out of the library. That's like the RNA. Uh, it's not a permanent copy. It's not going to last for you forever, but it's, it just, it's some information that you take with you to get the job done. Um, hopefully that analogy works, but yeah. um, <laughs> the RNA is going to give your cells instructions to make a protein. And once you make that protein, your body's going to recognize that, protein as foreign and mount an immune response toward it. And that immune response is going to instill immune memory and allow your body to better fight off the virus when it encounters the real thing. And uh, so once you have that immune memory, the mRNA uh, goes away within the course of a few weeks, it's pretty much gone. And then the protein will also get attacked and degraded by your immune system. So uh, what you're left with is immune memory. And then when you encounter the virus, your body mounts an immune memory response, producing antibodies and also T cells, specialized cells that are going to fight uh, foreign pathogens. And you're able to stop and clear the virus much faster than an unvaccinated person would. So then you don't get as sick or you're less likely to get sick and die from it. Hey, Dan, can I get COVID after taking the vaccine, but maybe it's much less intense? Does it work like that? Absolutely. And that's actually how every vaccine works. Um, vaccines don't prevent infection. That's not their first goal. The goal of a vaccine is to prevent disease, illness. So take the polio vaccines, for example. Uh, polio vaccines don't prevent infection. They prevent disease. Someone who is vaccinated against polio, they can still have polio virus infect their body, but their immune system is going to stop the virus before it makes them sick. That's why if we were to test the sewers of New York City right now, we would find polio. People are shedding it out of their bowels and into the sewer system, but hardly anyone is getting sick because everyone's vaccinated. And in fact, the only person to have gotten sick with polio in the past few decades was an unvaccinated person uh, just recently. Polio living in the sewers, man, that's a, that's a movie. Like I would, <laughs> I would buy a ticket for that movie. So one of the things I hear, and I hear a lot of, uh, you know, us lay people who do not have degrees in molecular biology, we go to, you know, whatever website and go, aha, that feels intuitive because anecdote ABC, I got the flu shot. And shortly after, I got sick. <laughs> Can I get the flu from the flu vaccine? I know this is an old question for a lot of people, but it still comes up. You're the scientist. What's the answer? Yeah, the, the answer is no. You, you cannot get the flu from the flu vaccine. You might 
get some aches and pains because your immune system is mounting a, a response to a vaccine, but that's not the flu. Um, the flu vaccines, the material they contain, they cannot actually infect you and make you sick. Um, that's not the way the flu vaccines work. Uh, so the answer is just a plain no for that. So back to COVID, I know this is a distraction because we were talking RFK and some of the more current stuff, but it all relates. It all ties in. I had some people come on my pages the other day mm -hmm. and because I was defending mask wearing. Can you explain mask science to me? Uh, yeah. So masks do work and the way they work is source control. That's their primary function in a community setting. In other words, if I'm infected, right, and I'm shedding virus out of my mouth and my nose, even when I talk or cough or sneeze, um, you generally want to block as many of those viral particles from getting out into the environment and infecting other people as possible. And a good way to do that is with a mask. Some people will say that the viruses are smaller than the pores in the mask. Um, that's because people don't understand that when viruses travel through the air, they don't travel as just individual little particles. They travel in snot, in saliva, and those particles are going to be big enough to get caught within the mask. There are also some electrostatic properties of the mask that kind of draw the particles into the fabric. It makes it easier for the fabric to catch them. And this has been measured in experiments. People who wear masks uh, and cough, sneeze, talk, whatever, when that material goes forward, it doesn't make it through the mask very easily. So you're reducing the amount of virus you're spreading into the environment and you're reducing the chances that you'll spread it to someone else. That's the well, point. Let me jump in though real is. fast if I can. Yeah. If I put a bandana over my mouth, I mean, does it have to be an N95 mask for it to be effective? So uh, surgical masks do have some efficacy, um, pretty good efficacy, I'd say. Uh, even cloth masks, if they're made uh, in a way that the material is layered, um, also have good efficacy. They're much much better than nothing. Uh, an N95 mask is going to be your your better protection than surgical or cloth masks. Uh, but again, the major point is uh, source control and cloth masks, surgical masks, N95 masks, those are all going to block a significant fraction of the stuff that you're spewing into the environment. Um, if you're looking to protect yourself from others, then an N95 mask is going to be a better bet. Okay. So it's more about protecting other people then? I mean, if I'm wearing a mask, it's not as much that I'm worried that uh, things that are flying out in the ether, you know, right? Is it a proximity thing? I'm more interested that I don't potentially infect others. Mm -hmm. is, am I hearing that right? Yeah. So if you think about it this way, um, if you're in a crowded area and you are worried about getting COVID or the flu or some other respiratory virus, generally the way it's going to happen in that crowded area is the air is going to become saturated with virus. And if there are lots of people in that area who are shedding virus, then that air is going to become saturated much faster. And then you're going to breathe that air in and potentially become infected, potentially get sick. With a lot of those people in that room wearing masks, then it's going to take a lot longer for the air to get saturated to a point where you can breathe it in and get sick. And so if you're delaying that time to which the air gets sufficiently saturated such that it can infect people, then you're also giving time for that air to move around. You know, that's why we talk about proper ventilation as well during the pandemic. If the air is moving around, then the concentration of that virus is gonna have an even harder time to reach that point where it can infect you if you breathe it in. So it's a multi-layered approach that we take by wearing masks and focusing on good ventilation. And also, yes, social distancing is also a factor there. I'm struck by the lack of empathy. A lot of these people, it's more important for them to sort of chest thump hashtag freedom. It becomes this yeah. sort of personal uh, a freedom stand instead of genuine empathy and concern for others. I mean, if there's even a chance 
you could help keep people safe. But I think it shows a lot about priorities. Damn it, I want to talk about RFK Jr., but first I want to talk about this quote-unquote documentary that came out last year, directed by Stu Peters. This is a piece of work. It's also a piece of crap. It's called Died Suddenly, and it's doing a lot of damage out there. Describe, if you would, sir, what it is and what the problem is. Right. Yeah, I, I made a video about that on my channel. Uh, it was pretty bad. It was a pretty bad documentary, um, a, a shockumentary, I think. It's better better describes it. Um, the basic idea is that the um, filmmaker pushes is that COVID vaccines are killing lots of people. And they, in their promos, they've had montages of people collapsing on, say, like a basketball court. And if you look at who that person was in that clip collapsing on a basketball court, you'll find that they're alive and well, and they're actually doing really well <laughs> in, in their career right now. So they didn't die suddenly. Um, that just kind of shows you, you know, the kind of things they have to do to make it look like they're pushing correct information. But I mean, do you know who this guy is? The Stu Peters dude? Is he like, um, oh God, who is the guy behind the falsified, totally bogus uh, research that came out so long ago? I'm sorry, I should have been prepared. I forgot his name. Is it Andrew? Uh, uh, somebody, uh, yeah. I don't know. I'll have to look Andrew. it up. Andrew Whitehead or, or Wakefield? White. Wakefield, sorry, Whitehead is actually a good guy. Yeah, Andrew Wakefield <laughs> had come out with that um, totally bogus quote unquote research that I think had to be retracted uh, eventually. He's an anti vax crank. Is Stu Peters, do you know anything about him? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, he is, he has recently subscribed to lots of conspiracy theories, including uh, he's made posts on Twitter implying that. He thinks that the Earth is flat or that space is fake. Um, <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, I don't, I don't no, no, no. I'm oh, sorry, Dan, you can't throw that out. I got to stop you. Space <laughs> is fake. No, no, no. You got to tell me about this one because I got to know. No, I mean, he, he just, I think it was whenever uh, SpaceX was making launches, uh, <laughs> he made reference to uh, the dome over the flat Earth, you know, the the thing that all the stars are actually attached to. It's not actually space. It's a dome. Yeah, he was making posts about that. So the guy is not well. Uh, he, he's pretty deep in the rabbit hole there. <laughs> I, know, so I actually know somebody, Dan, who believes in the firmament as written oh, yeah. about in Genesis, you know, that membrane over the earth that separates the waters of the earth from, I guess, the waters in space. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to have that kind I actually tried to have the conversation like, well, so is is NASA just in on it? Like all the world space agencies? Uh, how do you explain us landing on the moon? I mean, all that stuff. And it opened up this rabbit hole where, well, we faked the moon landing and Stanley Kubrick created a propaganda film in the 19... I mean, it was just crazy. Yeah. And I kind of regretted asking. <laughs> but it was, it was fascinating all at the same time. Uh, you appeared recently on Dr. Drew's program. Is mm -hmm. that right? Yep, I did go on his show. Okay, now, uh, who's Dr. Drew? Because uh, I'm, I'm introducing some fresh names for everybody, but explain who he is and what you did. So he's a, he has a program called Ask, Drew, Ask Dr. Drew. Uh, he's apparently been kind of like a, a Dr. Phil type character when it comes to media for a while. Uh, but recently during the pandemic, he's been platforming a lot of anti-vaxxers. Um, a lot of the names I mentioned, he's platformed RFK Jr., uh, multiple times. He's platformed Steve Kirsch and Edward Dowd and lots of different names in the anti-vaccine community. And so I hadn't known how much he had done that, but I did see when he platformed RFK Jr. I made a video about it because RFK Jr. was making the wild batshit claims that he always makes. And then Drew's team reached out to me and I was like, okay, sure. I'll go on your show. And so I did. And I told him, essentially, you know, you are platforming RFK Jr. And you're tossing him pretty much only softball questions, making him look as good as possible and indulging all of this anti-vaccine stuff that he pushes. Uh, so, like, what are you doing, Drew, is essentially what I've asked him. And by the end of the that conversation, he said, he said, yeah, I'll be more. I'll be more diligent in challenging my guests. And then a few weeks later, or 
Actually, it was a few months later, he platformed RFK Jr. again and threw them all softball questions. And in between that time, platformed other anti-vaxxers, giving them a lot of softball questions. So I don't think he's an honest character. RFK Jr., who has a long history of just wacky conspiracy claims. Mass shootings are linked to antidepressants. That's why we have mass shootings. He believes that the election was stolen, but he's not necessarily just talking about or wasn't talking about Trump. He's talking about the uh, 2004, like Bush two presidential election that was stolen. The CIA was involved in assassinating JFK Jr. I mean, the guy's just got all kinds of wacky conspiracy nut type stuff going on. And then we get to COVID and Joe Rogan, who honestly, Dan, Joe seems like a nice fella, right? He just seems like these, but I'm so sick and tired of the Joe bros going, well, he just has questions. He just wants to quote unquote, have conversations. I mean, who doesn't want to have conversations? So they make it feel very innocuous. Uh, your impression of uh, RFK Jr. on Rogan hit me. <laughs> well, first of all, I'll say, you know, I I'm not buying Joe's excuse of just asking questions anymore. I mean, in, in the science communication uh, community online that I have, we call that uh, just asking questions or jacking off, J-A-Qing. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's honest, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just... Just saying, oh, well, but don't you think there's something about this? Even after it's been explained to you multiple times that, you know, what you're thinking is essentially wrong. And then you just say, yeah, I don't know. I just think there's more. Like, no, that's not, you're not Would being, that be, you're not uh, being the equivalent genuine. of being in, uh, let's call it an uh, Oklahoma or American public. I say Oklahoman because it's going on in my state, but a uh, United States public school and trying to jam ID or creationism in because, you know, let's teach the controversy. Would you sort of call that the same kind of stuff? Yeah, it, it is pretty much the same thing where they're like, they have an agenda, they have a predetermined belief, and they just want to seem as reasonable as possible by saying, I just, th I just want to ask these questions and find the truth when, when they have another motive. But moving on to RFK Jr. on Joe Rogan, I mean, that was one of the wildest Joe Rogan episodes that I've listened to. I haven't listened to many, but that's a really high bar to pass being the wildest one. Uh, Cause I've listened to pretty much a lot of his uh, anti-vaccine uh, guest episodes and those were crazy. So this one being the craziest. All right. Well, give wrong. me some specifics. Uh, you're probably getting there, but I'm just, I'm sitting yeah, on the edge of my chair. Come on. Some of these specific claims he's making. So uh, one of the wilder ones that people might not know about is that RFK Jr. is an HIV AIDS denier, meaning he thinks that HIV does not cause AIDS. He thinks it's poppers and lifestyles of gay people that causes AIDS, which is totally offensive and just downright wrong. It's been, that has been debunked for decades uh, and he's still pushing it. He, he pushes it in his book, uh, which Joe Rogan says that he read and then he agrees with that. And Joe and Robert have this talk about this drug AZT, which was, uh, which was and still is an antiretroviral, a drug that targets HIV and saying essentially that it's poison, right? They think it's poison, but they're giving it to people for some reason because, because big pharma, whatever. Uh, it doesn't make sense, but it's such a disgusting belief because there are real world examples, many real world, ex world examples of people who believe this crap and die because of it, because they have HIV and they think that this stuff is poison. So they refuse to take it and they die. And Robert RFK Jr. in 2023 is still pushing that idea because he hates Fauci because he hates big pharma for no other reason. I feel so bad about Fauci, you know, when I've, learned more about his life his contributions to fighting the you know the aids crisis when certainly in the mid 80s very few people wanted to even talk about it beyond the fact that it was god's judgment on the gays you heard a lot of that from falwell etc reagan himself i don't think even said the word until the late 1980s i mean it was just too little too late and yet fauci was right there on the front lines 
Mm-hmm. But these people have made him a villain. They're calling for his arrest or worse. You and the science community have watched this play out. Your thoughts? Yeah, it, it's kind of concerning. Uh, a lot of people who are on the more extreme end of hating Fauci, which I encounter them regularly on the internet, are calling for this Nuremberg II, which is basically they want Fauci and doctors and scientists executed for uh, pushing what they think are COVID lies. Uh, it's ridiculous. Um, and, but even the less extreme, less extreme than that is still pretty bad because uh, you see it in Congress, how, or on Twitter with Elon Musk saying it, how they think that Fauci should be prosecuted and jailed for what, for, for, uh, running a pand- for running a response to a pandemic as best as he can. And he didn't run the response. He just advised the president. The president did not have to take any of his advice. And, and often didn't. didn't. Often didn't, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just ridiculous to channel that they're channeling all this hate at Fauci um, and by proxy other scientists as well. You were talking about the AIDS virus. Uh, this is just an aside. I have been... Uh, in my studio recording the audiobook version of um, Dr. Abby Hafer's book called The Not-So-Intelligent Designer. And she was talking about how science denial is really harmful. I mean, it can do a tremendous amount of harm. And I know we say that in the abstract, but she got into a specific example of how in South Africa, mm-hmm. the thinking from the top was that you know HIV didn't cause AIDS and that you could treat AIDS with diet and like eating garlic and shit like that. And over this, you know, short window of time, 30, what, 350,000 people died of AIDS and you know how beliefs translate into action and inaction. But we hear a lot of this, you know, you can defeat viruses, you can defeat cancer, et cetera, by diet. I guess I'm going to segue a little bit into that for a second. I hear a lot of these people say, well, go vegan or paleo or eat more vitamin C and hey, you'll never get cancer or you can ward off COVID. You want to talk about food and viruses? Sure. I mean, that seems to be what Joe Rogan thinks, that if you live a healthy lifestyle, if you eat well and exercise, then you don't have to worry about infectious disease. And that's unrealistic. I mean, of course, it's good to be healthy. It's good to be mindful of what you eat. It's good to be active. No doctor is going to be against that advice. And if you look at the history of medical advice, you'll see that doctors have always said that that's not new. However, it doesn't make you, it doesn't give you this magic shield against infectious disease because what with infectious disease, the way that your body fights it is by having immunity toward it an immune memory toward it. And you're not going to get that by being healthy, by eating good and exercising. The only way you're going to get immune memory is if you encounter the pathogen, the virus, and build an immunity toward it, or you get vaccinated first. And if you encounter that pathogen before you get vaccinated, that's a risk. You are at risk of becoming really sick. You're at risk of suffering and you're at risk of dying. And why wouldn't you want to reduce that risk? Well, I mean, I totally get if you are more optimized health-wise, you'll be stronger to be able to, mm-hmm. I don't know, dedicate yourself to whatever regimen you need. What about genetics? I mean, if I'm, but there's a genetic predisposition to a certain type of cancer in my family line, mm-hmm. then eating kale probably isn't going to do anything, right? I, I doubt it. Um, I mean, so when it comes to cancer, I mean, a cancer is really a disease of age, mostly. Um, Yeah, it's possible to do things in your life that will increase your risk of getting cancer at a younger age. But really, as you age, your risk of cancer just goes up because that's how the biology works. It's a disease of DNA damage. And as you age, your DNA gets more and more damage. Um, So eating a quote unquote good diet, that you could argue that eliminating eliminating certain foods might give you a marginally better chance, but really, I, I I don't think that I think that people hugely oversell it whenever they are pushing their particular diets. 
um, to the point where they are pushing pseudoscience by saying you will avoid cancer if you eat this food, uh, because that that's just not being honest. So, I mean, I think that may fall into the it couldn't hurt category, uh, yeah. maybe. But yeah. we certainly see the wellness industry play all this stuff. You know, eat this herb. Hey, here's some shark cartilage. Here's aromatherapy, <laughs> crystal light. Mm -hmm. You know, they got all this crazy shit for a, for what is, you know, something that has to be treated, at least mainly treated in other ways. Mm -hmm. RFK Jr., I don't think he's got a shot, right? I don't think, he, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not an expert. But from my vantage, I see him as somebody who's getting a lot of attention, but it's just, I just don't think people respond to him. They're kind of interested, like in a car wreck kind of way. Maybe he's got his fans. Do you have the impressions on the guy? I mean, this is just you and me talking over coffee, but what are your impressions? Do you think the guy's going to be influential at all? I, I don't think he, I want to say, I don't think he has a, sh a shot to actually be a presidential candidate. Um, I want I want to have a little bit of a, res a little bit of reservation when I say that though because I said the same thing in 2016 <laughs> yeah. and yeah. you know how that turned out. <laughs> yeah, I had to eat some serious crow on that one. <laughs> you know, because I'm sure we were both doing the same thing. We're going, "No. Yeah, come on. You got to be." And then we looked around the, in November and thought, "How did we get here and are we circling the drain as a species?" Right? <laughs> Yeah. Are we circling the drain? I know you've had this sort of existential conversation with yourself, Dan Wilson, molecular biologist. Let's get philosophical mm -hmm. with the the overrun of misinformation that looks slick and feels intuitive and sounds credible, often propagated by these high profile people that might actually have a PhD. Mm -hmm. Are we screwed? I, I don't think we're screwed. Um, I think it's very discouraging right now because, you know, on one hand, disinformation and misinformation has always been around. Even a hundred years ago with smallpox, you, you could imagine it would be pretty hard to downplay smallpox if it were around today, permanently scarring children and killing lots of people. But people did a hundred years ago. People downplayed it. People were, there were anti-vaxxers back then. And so there are anti-vaxxers today too. Uh, so they've always been around. They're not going away. And with the internet, they have a bigger bullhorn. But scientists have those same tools, and we just have to have to use those same tools to fight against them. Um, so I, I don't think we're screwed, but I think we have a tough fight against disinformation uh, on our plate. Okay. Well, I mean, I, what are we going to do? Go home, give up? Like, I don't want to surrender to to the quacks right now. And I'm so thankful for you, uh, Dan, for your page. Debunk the Funk, I'm going to go ahead and put that in the description box of the show with the hopes that this we've done a very, very, very shallow sort of a, a wading into some of these waters. But you've gone a lot deeper on a lot of amazing subjects, whether it's the quacks or the agents of disinformation or RFK Jr. You've got a piece on Dr. Drew, mm -hmm. just teaching molecular biology in ways that the rest of us can play along. And I appreciate that because I'm an idiot, right? <laughs> I enjoyed English classes. I hated science classes because I often, well, first I was in a Christian school, so it was <laughs> science with an asterisk like oh look when god created the trees kind of shit but uh, i also got overwhelmed and you're uh, you're really good at educating people like us allowing us to play in that sandbox and that's mm. greatly appreciated final push uh, tell everybody what your work is what your page is what it's about where to find you uh, yeah so my youtube channel is debunk the funk with dr wilson it's my hobby i do it in my spare time so i upload videos when i can um, I'm also on Twitter, uh, under the name debunk the funk and on Instagram as well, but I'm most active on, on YouTube. So, uh, yeah, if you're interested, go check it out. Yeah. I have to, I have to ask before we go, the, the, the stuff that Fauci gets like the venom and even the threats, you mm -hmm. ever get that yourself? Do people ever come after you? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I get, I get death threats and, um, a lot of hate mail. It's Why would they threaten your life, Dan? <laughs> what is it that you were doing that they believe warrants execution? Well, you got to understand when conspiracy theorists, uh, when their claims are getting debunked, for a lot of them, this is their identity. 
like the conspiracy theory is their identity it's their purpose because they're fighting against the big bad boogeyman which is big pharma or the government or the the reptilians whatever uh and when you're trying to take that away from them it's a personal attack on them so then they personally attack you so um <laughs> they they lash out however they can and it's just part of the gig unfortunately but uh i don't let it bother me personally uh but i know that a lot of scientists get a lot more than i do uh, some get actual stalkers who physically show up at their house luckily that hasn't happened to me yet but uh man it can be rough Oh, we have good reason to be suspicious of Dan Wilsh. We know that you're making squillions of dollars because of Big Pharma. <laughs> we know that you're living in a palace right now, looking down oh. your nose at the mm -hmm. unwashed. You know, it's such a, it's really such a posh gig. You know, I, I get that science. Yeah, I mean, you know, if if anyone finds my Big Pharma check, I would love <laughs> to be able to pay for my kids' daycare for the next year. So, uh, yeah, because uh, I haven't, I haven't gotten it. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, funk is being debunked thanks to scientists like Dan Wilson. You are a, you're a great interview, and I appreciate you helping to educate us and sort of spread the sanity out there. We'll point everybody to your pages, and let's talk again soon, okay? Sounds good, Seth. Thanks for having me.